continues as the Mammoth Hawks host the Knights of Fairleigh Dickinson University. Hello everyone, I'm Bob Lampin and welcome to Monmouth University. With me is Rob Kennedy, big time of the season, Rob, and of course tonight a great game. FDU and Monmouth, two teams that genu genuinely do not like each other. Well, yeah, because it's a rivalry, because they're just separated up the parkway by a couple exits, about 60 of them to be exact, but these are two teams that have had great rivalries, and it seems like every FDU game has come down to the last couple minutes. And throw records out away, this is not the best FDU team. They come in right now in seventh place in the league, and they've generally not had a very good season, but I guarantee you this, They'll play tough against the Hawks tonight. Well, Wayne's Oaks Club, and we know he's had a great season and so forth, but it really doesn't mean a whole lot what's happened in the past. The Hawks are at a point right now where Mammoth at 15 and 8, 12 and 3 in the league cannot stumble tonight. No question about that. A win tonight guarantees them at least the third seed in the tournament, and they're still alive for first and second seed. They're guaranteed already a home game in the quarterfinals of the playoffs, but John Geraldo and the other seniors do not want to leave this season at just that mark. Well, Their goal is not to get into the playoffs this year. Their goal is to win a championship. Tonight is senior night. They'll be honoring John Geraldo and the other seniors. And Tom Green, the longtime head coach at FDU, brings in a team that is always scary, always physical, and one thing they want to do is ruin senior night for the Monmouth Hawks tonight. Yeah, he doesn't. He only has one senior on his roster, so senior night doesn't mean very much to them. You see they're 7 and 16. They're a young team. They lost their point guard Elijah Haskins before the season started with a broken foot and Hill red shirt and that's been the key to their struggling. They average almost 20 turnovers a game and losing Elijah Allen has been the big reason for that. And we know that FDU historically comes into this gymnasium and gives the Hawks fits. One of the reasons of course is because they always bang inside. And they also, Tom Green likes to shorten the game at times against that, against that Mammoth as we take a look there at the score of the first game. Only the third time that Mammoth has ever won in the Rothman Center. You know is going to be all fired up. And as you said, historically, they've played well in this building. And historically, they've been close games that have come down the last two, three possessions. So it certainly should be exciting. FDU is in town tonight. It is senior night here at the Boylan Gymnasium. We're going to meet the seniors shortly. Let's go to PA announcer Roger Benedetti. Good evening and welcome to Boylan Gymnasium on the campus of Monmouth University. Tonight's Northeast Conference game features the 7 and 16 FDU Knights versus the 15 and 8 Monmouth Hawks. Tonight, before introducing these starters, the Monmouth University basketball program would like to recognize four senior members of the basketball team as they make their final regular season appearance here in Boylan Gym. Although this individual has not scored a basket in four years, his contributions to the basketball program go far beyond the boundaries of the court. He has been an integral part of the day-to-day -day operations, and many will tell you that he is the glue that holds his team together. A senior manager from New Providence, New Jersey, Willie Consovoy. senior forward has been a key part of the Hawks bench for four years. A rugged and determined competitor, he has scored 186 points and grabbed 161 rebounds in 91 career games. When not taking charges or scrapping for rebounds under the basket, he has excelled in the classroom, earning Dean's List honors. A senior forward from Manassas, Virginia, Pat Flynn. In four years, the 6'6 senior has made opposing coaches dread the sound of the substitution buzzer. He has made a living of sparking the Hawks off the bench and recently became the seventh player to reach 1,000 points. He ranked seventh in career assist with 200 and is sixth on the all-time rebounding list with 396. 
a senior forward from Bayonne, New Jersey, Jack Gordon. Tonight, Jack will also be receiving the ball from the game in which he scored his 1,000th point. Few will question the mark that this individual has left on the Monmouth basketball program. In four years, the silky smooth point guard has started 106 of 107 games and has logged nearly 4,000 minutes of action. Whether he was drilling threes or knifing through the lane, he made the opposition pay with 1,653 points and 463 assists. He stands in second place all time in both these categories and ranks in the top three in eight other categories. A senior guard from Guttenberg, New Jersey, John Geraldo. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, how about one more round of applause for the class of 1996. And now, let's meet the starting lineups. First, tonight's visiting team, the FDU Knights. At one guard, a 6'2 freshman from Rochester, New York, number 24, Rob Norris. The other guard is a six-foot junior from Guttenberg, New Jersey, number 23, Pablo Carrasco. At one forward, at 6'2", a junior from Jersey City, New Jersey, number 20, Andre Descher. At the other forward, a 6'5", senior from North New Jersey, number 44, Isaac Morgan. And at center, 6'6", six, six, sophomore from Passaic, New Jersey, number 32, Rashawn Turner. The assistant coaches are Fred Hill, Tiny Green, and Russ Thompson. The head coach of the Knights in his 13th season is Tom Green. And now let's meet the starters for the home team. Your Monmouth Hawks. At one guard, a 5'11 senior from Gutenberg, New Jersey, number 10. John Geraldo. As the other guard, a 6'5 junior from Red Bank, New Jersey, number 34, Mustafa Barksdale. At one forward, a 6'6 six, six senior from Bayonne, New Jersey, number 15, Jack Gordon. forward at 6'9", a junior from Tums River, New Jersey, number 23, Corey Albano. And at center, a 6'7", senior from Manassas, Virginia, number 40, Pat Flynn. The assistant coaches are Dave Calloway, Amy Party, and Ron Crail. The head coach of the Hawks in his ninth season is Wayne Zoke. The officials for tonight's game are Jeff Plunkett, John Leshner, and Kevin Quirk. Please rise to honor America and join in the singing of our national anthem. Tonight's anthem is being sung by Mindy Karp.
And we are ready to get underway. FDU to visit the Monmouth University Hawks. A look at the starting lineups. For Monmouth, John Geraldo and Mustafa Barksdale in the backcourt. Pat Flynn is the senior jumping at center. Corey Albano and Jack Gordon up front. Once again, Wayne's Oaks starting all of his seniors. For Fairley Dickinson, Norris and Carrasco in the backcourt. Rashawn Turner, he's a key player for FDU at center. And Morgan and Dasher up front. And you see their lineup, a relatively young lineup. You talked about Turner. He was the rookie of the year last year, newcomer of the year in the NEC. As was a preseason first team all pick. Has struggled at times, but still leads FDU in scoring and rebounding. Look at the totals on the season. FDU averaging 66 points a game, but giving up 73. And Mammoth at almost 71 a game. Good job defensively at 66. So here we go. Fairleigh Dickinson, the visitors. Big game for both teams. FDU at 6 and 9 in the league. And Mammoth at 12 and 3. First possession to the Monmouth Hawks, and Rob, uh, once again, Wayne Zoak, senior night, starting all of his seniors. It doesn't matter how big the game is, he feels those contributions are more important. No question about that, and if you give four years of sweating and hustling and practice like a guy like Pat Flynn does, you deserve to get the start. And Pat Flynn scores the two, first two points of the game as Jack Gordon went down the lane, gave it up, uh, Brought Tom Green up off the bench already, screaming for the charge on Gordon after the dish. You'd have to say that Pat Flynn's on fire. Five for five against LIU the other night as well. That's right. Pat Flynn had a career high of 11 points in that game at LIU. Kicks it out to Barksdale. Barksdale for three. He's got it. Stop the Barksdale, who's been in a slump, really struggled against LIU. But steps right up there. Nice pass from Pat Flynn. Mammoth out of the blocks quickly on top, five zip. Just one minute into this basketball game. Key to the Hawks' victory up at the Rothman Center earlier this year was their defense when they held FDU to just 52 points. Nice athletic fall away right there by Isaac Morgan. Morgan averages almost 13 a game. Came off the bench last year in that NEC playoff game here in really contributed to the FDU win. And has been playing very good basketball as of late. Has had career highs in two out of their last four games. Also led the team with 16 against Wagner. Inside it was Albano. Albano with the putback. Isaac Morgan tried to jump up to initiate contact, but no call. Good no call by the officials. Mammoth, I'm sorry, Bob. Mammoth has started quickly their last couple games. That has not been a characteristic of Mammoth in years past. Sometimes they've come out of the locker room a little slow, but they've come out with a vengeance here the last couple games. Long three-pointer missed and a foul underneath. And it looks like it's going to go against Isaac Morgan on the rebound. That's foul number 44, Isaac Morgan. That's his first personal foul, first team foul on the night. Tom Green, you see Tom right there. Second, or excuse me, the most wins in NEC history and one of the top coaches in the league. And you saw him right in John Letcher's ear. And that was Albano on the miss, and Green was worrying about a call later on. That's what that little conversation was about. No coach in the NEC works the officials better than Tom Green. He does it early and often. And a nice steal by Pat Flynn. Gordon with the spin called on the charge. I guess the conversation may have paid off. You got it. And, that, and that's what Tom Green does. He plants the seed in the officials here. He was complaining the very first play of the game when he thought Gordon charged in on the layup from Flynn. And Tom Green working the officials as he always does. Tom Green in his 13th season. The leading coach in terms of number of career victories in the NEC. He's also taken two teams to the NCAA tournament and a team to the NIT. So he is no stranger to postseason play, something Mammoth is trying to accomplish for the first time under Wayne Zoe. Morgan bounces over to Sean Turner. Inside they go back to Morgan. Morgan forces it up and again FDU battling on the offensive glass. You got to get a body on Turner. He's a good athlete. Gets up to the rim quickly as a knack for scoring on the offensive boards. Mammoth on top by three. Barks 
Barksdale puts this one on the floor. Nice feed inside. Albano backs it in. It's been dribble penetration by other Hawks that has forced FDU to collapse. And Corey Albano, active without the ball, has stepped to the open area. Carrasco bounces over to Dasher. Here's Norris. Huh? And a <laughs> bombing violation. When's the last time you saw that one? Well, the only time you usually see it out in the open floor when you really carry it. You gotta be kidding me, Kevin! And that's a good right there. He's right <laughs> on it. Advantage is advantage. Hell, you've been in the damn park all your life. For Christ's sake, that's not a carry. <laughs> Barksdale takes advantage of the turnover. After the terrific, terrific job of a little color commentating there from Tom Green on the sidelines. 11-4, Mammoth on top. Out front number 20, it's Andre Dasher. Geraldo comes up with the steal, the lead pass to Barksdale. And out of bounds, and Mammoth will keep it. Aggressive play by the Hawks. Nice steal by John Geraldo. And again, another turnover from FDU. Mentioned in the open, they averaged nearly 20 a game, and that's been their downfall this season. Well, you better get the mic off him quick. <laughs> Playing with fire there. There's Gordon at the top. Little zone. Little zone for FDU. Over the top, underneath to Albano. And once again, Albano off to a quick start. He's got six points. Mammoth leads it 13 to four, and FDU calls timeout. Take a look here. Good ball movement against the zone defense, and nice strong move by Corey Albano. He's off to a quick start already tonight with six. Albano with six points, five points for Barksdale, and this just the kind of start that Mom has needed, Rob, on top, 13 to four. It was four years ago, December the 1st, 1992, that young man, now a senior captain, was a freshman. And let's listen in to Mark Ross from Chuck Lorenzo. Tipped around, no good. Holland had the rebound for the Colonials. Oh! Moses rejected by Barnes. There's that transition game. Nice look. Geraldo has his first college field goal and pulls the Hawks within 4 12 8. That December the 1st, 1992, against George Washington, Mark Rossman and Chuck Lorenzo on the call. Right now, Geraldo with 1,653 points. That was a long time ago. Long time ago. He's number two on the Division I all-time scoring list behind Al Blackwell and needs 96 points. And if the Hawks can advance deep into the NEC playoffs, he's got a chance to leave as the number one scorer in Division I's history. What a terrific career, though, Geraldo has had here at Monmouth University. Right now, he's not worrying about careers. He's worrying about this game here with Monmouth on top, 13-4. Look for FDU, too, on the timeout to switch up defenses. Tom Green likes to mix it up. Wouldn't be surprised to see them in full court pressure. Clarksdale, the steal and the jam. Can't get in pressure, though, unless you can score on the offensive end. FDU not even getting shot attempts because they've been careless with the basketball. It's been turnover city. And that has been the problem for FDU all season. Taking care of the ball. Carrasco for three. Albano skying for that rebound. Two on two. Gordon fills the right lane. Short jump won't go. Pat Flynn, good job inside. Seven out of his last seven, and Pat Flynn doing what he does best, hustling, getting garbage points. Nice job by Pat Flynn. Good to see the big guys filling the lanes, and Flynn hustling down, got in position to pick up the loose ball. 13-point cushion for Mammoth, and that one deflected out by Albano. Take a look here again. It's been turnovers, good defensive positioning by Barksdale, and then he makes sure there's no question about it with a nice jam out ahead of the field. Barksdale with seven points already, so Mustafa fighting his way out of a slump. 
as a coach, when you can't score, you don't have answers for anything. As we said, looking for FDU to maybe switch things up, but if you can't score and allow your team to get into some full court pressure or different half court traps, you can't score, you can't find answers. Tom Green's club has just given the basketball up on the five-second call. Good defense by Mammoth. FD one able to get it in bounds underneath. Great work on the boards right there. Albano missed it once, but not twice. And Albano, very active, just like he was in the LIU game when he had a huge first half, ended up with 22 and 11. But look at his quick feet here. He's had some good spring off his legs here late in the season, quick off his feet. He's showing you some strength there shot. on the finish as well. Jim King called on the foul. Nine points for the junior out of Toms River, New Jersey. 20 to four, Mammoth on top. Since the St. Francis of PA game here at home, the Hawks have been very focused and have come out quick, getting right on top of opponents. And there's a three-pointer three drilled pointer. right there by Pablo Carrasco. Three-pointer. Well, with the injury to Elijah Allen, he stepped up and seen big minutes here this year. Big surprise, only scored 22 points his entire first two years. He comes in averaging seven a game this year. It's a pretty big lift. And that's a nice rebound by Gordon right there on a three-point miss by Albano. FDU stays in the zone. Mama spreads the floor. Gordon looking for three. He's got it. He matches Carrasco's three-pointer with one of his own. And it's been the seniors here early on, as well as Corey Albano. Mammoth off to the quick start. You see the story right there, 23 to 7. Morgan bouncing out front. Norris is wide open. He's got it. And he's got to step up and look for a shot a little bit more. He's been too passive, too content to reverse the ball. Rob Norris, too good a shooter to pass up shot. And that was a three-pointer for Norris. He averages 10.8 a game. 13-point cushion for the Hawks. Inside to Albano, he goes glass. Chimo King now back in the game after starting this small lineup, but it doesn't matter. Corey Albano continues to work it on the low post. And that one tossed away. Good hands by Wayne Zoke. And you notice Wayne switched to the left hand and bounced <laughs> it to the referee. There you go. Always emphasizing, always emphasizing fundamentals as Coach Zoke. Again, Albano inside. This time he came up short on it. And ball was touched on the baseline by an FDU player out of bounds to Monmouth. Whether FDU's been in zone or man hasn't mattered much as far as Albano being able to post up, and FDU had done a good job in the first game holding him to just 10 points. Not so here tonight. Quick start for Corey. What a bounce pass inside from Barksdale to Albano. Looked like he almost lost the ball there as he went up for the shot. So far, Mama's doing a good job against Turner inside. Well, you hear the reaction from the fans. They don't think that uh, referee Kevin Quirk is correct on that. Let's watch. That yeah, looked pretty looked right to me. from there. <laughs> Blood on the shirt of Corey Albano. So Albano quickly has trainer Jim Murdoch with that miracle solution you're allowed to rub on there. He must leave the game. Ideas will check in for him. There's Deidris Ideas. Ideas has started all season. Didn't start tonight because it's senior night and the seniors are playing so well that he wouldn't have been in there now if it wasn't for the blood on Albano's shirt. Yeah, no need to get Pat Flynn or Jackie Gordon or Geraldo out of there. All three seniors stepping up on senior night. 11-18 to play here in the first half. Here's Morgan. And Ideas right off the bench comes up with his first rebound of the night. 
So far, Monmouth more than holding their own on the backboards. That's always been a key for them against FDU. At times, FDU has beat them up off the glass. Norris, nice move against Barksdale. And Barksdale called on the foul. Kind of a lazy bounce pass and tried to force down the other way. See if we can see the foul here. Nice little hesitation by Norris out in the open floor. Got a little contact on the body. Got it up to the rim. Held on there for a while. Balls off, so he'll shoot two. Rob Norris out of Rochester, New York. Been one of the few bright spots for FDU this year. He's been the newcomer of the week in the league two times. Has some terrific range. Really works at his game. He's a true gym rat. As we said, he's too good a shooter to pass up shots. Needs to be a little more aggressive here against his own day. Four points in the game for Norris. And the Monmouth lead is 14 at 25-11 with 10.50 to play in the first half. And a 1-3-1 half court track. Extending the zone. Adidas try to go cross court to Gordon. And picked up by FDU. Here's Norris, pulls up for three. And Gordon up for the rebound. That's a way to be a little more aggressive. I guess so. One on four, fire from 20. Again, the little half-court trap. Mammoth needs to move the basketball. Beautiful feed. Gordon to Flynn. Flynn looked for the foul. Didn't get it. And here come the Knights. And good entry feed right there to number 32, Rashawn Turner. Idea is called on the foul. Foul's called number 12, Andrews Idea. His first personal foul. First foul on Idiotis. Team foul number three. Albano, Albano checks Two back in, replaces Pat, Pat Flynn. Flynn. Good job by Pat Flynn. Number four, Albano back there with 11 Quincy points. Jack Gordon. Jack Gordon takes a seat, replaced by number four, Quincy Lee. For the number 20, Andre returns. Gordon, all smiles. All substitutions here, one and then the other. It's about a 60-second uh, substitution pattern there. Well, you'll see that from Tom Green. He will substitute in response to some of your subs. Dasher is back on for FDU. Mama came up with the strip. Here's Quincy Lee. Corner jump. And a rebound by Jamo King. Can't leave him alone along that baseline. Quincy Lee injured his finger on his right hand in the last game. Long rebound back to FDU. Nice block by Albano. King trying to go by him. Corey let him go by him and then blocked it from behind. A good recovery, as you said. Looked like he was beaten and reached from behind to knock it away. Geraldo can the three. That was a quick release. Defense coming right at him. He had himself set. He really hasn't had a shot all game, so he was waiting for one. Quick release, as you said, by Geraldo. Great use of his legs on that one. He should have the three-point range. He was down here for an hour before the game, firing threes. And deep ones. Twenty-eight eleven is the score. Scored a goal right there for number 32, Rashawn Turner. Foul against Corey Albano. Corey Albano. First Take a look here. Foul. Better ball movement by FDU after the start of the game. They've been getting number people three, moving Jeff through Frank the Frank zone, the trying game. to find some he gaps, getting better ball, ball reversal. Yeah. The worst thing you can do against Monmouth's matchup zone is stand still. You put a person stationary in a spot, they're going to guard him. You've got to move bodies and get the ball moving to penetrate against that zone. There's Rashad Turner at the line, in and out. The rebound to Monmouth. Monmouth on top 28-13. Jeff Franklin has checked in. Clarksdale took a seat. Corner jump, Lee. He's got it. As we said, one of his favorite places to maneuver along the baseline. And against that half-court trap there, good penetration by Geraldo. Biggest lead of the night for Monmouth. They lead it 30 to 13. Good position by Lee inside. Monmouth 
very focused tonight, however, Geraldo with the turnover behind the back. And Carrasco finishes. Nice feed from Dasher. Basketball, Pablo Carrasco. FDU, good team out on the break. The two guards handling the ball. Carrasco with the finish. Number 50, Kareem Thompson checks in. Five points for number 22, Pablo Carrasco. Number 50, Kareem Thompson in there for FDU. A little bit surprised that Dasher gave it up on that, Rob, but they got the two out of it. Oh. Geraldo on the reverse. Alfano with the follow. Great move by Geraldo. Almost got it to fall. And They've really done a good job trying to take him away, but at times it's been at the expense of others to concentrate it too much and taking Geraldo away, and a guy like Albano steps up and has 13. 20 second timeout, time watch it again. Geraldo just tip, tiptoes along that end line. Avoids three different defenders. And then Albano there for the mop up job. Good job by Albano as he went one way, the right arm came out to keep number 50, Green Thompson, off his back. Albano with 13 already. Uh, that's just like the last game against LIU where he came out on fire in the first half. And again, he's had good spring in his legs. Good sign late in the year. And Mammoth has looked fresh. Deidre Sidatis did not start this game as we said earlier it is senior night and all the seniors started and the, the trio of Geraldo, Gordon and Pat Flynn played so well they got a good minimum 10 minutes anyway. So here we go with 7.30 to play in the first half. Mammoth off to a real solid start at 32-15. Almost stolen away. Back out, 10 on the shot clock. Norris, a floater in the lane. Pretty shot right there Rob by Rob Norris. He's got six. Tough move by Norris to get into the lane. Put it up, looked like there was some contact. No call. Important stat, Rob. So far, Mammoth doing a job on the backboards as you see Albano. And they're gonna score it as that ball was still on the rim. Credit the two points to Albano. Mammoth on top of the rebounding battle, 15 to six. They, they continue to hit the boards here. Albano with the first miss, can't get the second one, but Timo King helps him out as the ball was coming off the backboard. It was still in the lane. Tom Green, of course, is gonna have a little discussion about it. The ball definitely was still up on the rim. It was an easy rebound. It wasn't a little more patience, it would have fallen off. And referee Jeff Plunkett telling Tom Green, I saw it clearly. I think Green complained more that it was Plunkett from that side making the call rather than the right side uh, official. Yeah, John Letcher had a good look at it, but he missed it. But Plunkett right there, one of the reasons why you have three officials. Well, it's time for the pizza giveaway. The roads that make the most noise. And on this side, uh, that we're looking at, that's, that's a rowdy side across the court. For most noise, you get a pizza for your row along with some soda. It takes them a long time to make the decision though. I think what happens is they're looking for bribes. Right, yeah, the judge you're the person with the pizza, you can make some money here, you know, you got a student, trying to make ends meet. At least look for your friends and then you go up there. There you go. See, if you're smart, you go up and pick a row before the game and say, hey, look, I got a pizza. What's that cost you? Like eight, nine bucks? Give me four. You got one. NCAA rules, though, you can't do that. We'll be on probation we pull that. Yeah, don't tell them. 34-17, the pizza giveaway is in the books. And we've got 640 left in the first half here. Out front is number 24, Rob Norris. Inside. And Kareem Thompson says good pass, but couldn't quite handle it as it was knocked away. Nice D by Adidas. He was on the ball and came back in and got a hand on it, knocked it out. There's Norris. Back to Carrasco. Double dribble. Good call. 
It's a double dribble, so they're going to take it away. Well, Chimo King, one of the top recruits in the NEC last year, playing really on only one foot. He broke his foot before the year, only at 60%, but they've needed even just his 60%. And away from the ball, down on the baseline. It goes against number 35, Chimo King. That's his second. Tom Green. When he retires from coaching, will become a congressional lobbyist, I'm sure. <laughs> there you go. He knows how to do it. He's working John Letcher now. He does it in a nice way, you know. And comes up and bugs him for a little while. And that's why he can get away with it. Jump shot was missed, and Norris gets it underneath and an offensive foul against number 20, Andre Dasher. A good defensive positioning again by Jadris Ideatis as he took away the baseline. Good position picked up the charge. Take a look here. Dasher thinks he's got an open lane to the basket, but Ideatis rotates down instead of leaving his feet to block the shot, picks up a charge. Frustration on the face of Coach Tom Green as his team trails at 34-17. 535 to play in the half. And on that play, you saw Ideatis with the ball out top. FDU's not going to come out and guard him at all. They play him like he's a non-offensive threat. Geraldo tried to split the defenders. But a break for Mammoth as Franklin picked it up. Stolen away, Carrasco. And that'll be a foul against Ideatis. That's his second. Well, Franklin tracked the ball down in the backcourt, but what he did is he looked up at the shot clock to see if it had been reset because the shot clock was down. Take a look at it here. Remember now, shot clock's in single digits, so he doesn't really know whether or not it was reset. And if we look, see him look up at the shot clock, he's looking again instead of paying attention to the basketball, and Carrasco quickly in for the steal. And there's the blocking foul. Great job by a cameraman there to pick up his eyes, looking up to the shot clock. First point in the game for Dasher. That's why I think everyone should have the shot clock above the basket. That way you don't have to look back onto it, you know, behind you or along on the side. That way you keep your eyes up. You're always focusing in on the rim anyway, and if the shot clock sits right up above the basket, you don't have a turnover like that. Barksdale and Gordon back on for Mammoth. Pat Flynn also out there. Here's Geraldo, pull up 16 feet away, got it. John Geraldo with good quickness here to start tonight's game. He's all fired up here in this last regular season home game. 36-18, FDU trails it. Norris backs it out. Looks for the screen, finally gets it, fires it up, and rattles in the three. Well, he tried to slide behind the screen. He got to fight over top, especially when Norris has the ball in his hands. Gordon bounces inside. Beautiful bounce pass. Look how active Albano is, although he comes up empty there. Norris. Front, uses the high screen once again. Well, that's the jump shot that Monmouth would love to see King take all night. And yet he almost banked it in. Either that or it almost went through the backboard. I'm not sure which. <laughs> it looked good from outside there. Chimo King, true low post player. Pat Flynn playing with confidence, thought about giving up the pass. He said, hey, they're not guarding me, and he drilled it. Well, and they say his foot's on the line, but Pat Flynn, Ooh. an offensive force. He only had two points prior to the LIU game. How about that? He's been on fire. He came up with 11 the other night against LIU. He's got seven here in the first half and almost came up with the steal. And as you mentioned, that 11 points was his career high, so he's looking to try and better that here tonight. What better way to go out as senior? Keep, keep putting up those career highs in your last few games. That's right. Isaac Morgan, number 44, back on for FDU. Turner also has returned. And the back shot by Rashawn Turner. Nice catch in the bank. 
Well, the Hawks came close to forcing another five-second violation on the baseline out of bounds. Instead, FDU gets it in and scores the easy two. 15-point lead for Monmouth. Geraldo wants three more. That time he fell away a bit. And quick release, though. Inside, Morgan whirls and misses. And Turner couldn't come up with the loose ball. Left to use, going to continue to crash and crash the offensive boards. Hawks have done a very good job on the backboards in the early going, but you can never rest against FDU because they're going to continue to try and climb up your back. Back to the 1-3-1. Geraldo, they double team quickly. Nice feed, Albano over the top to Gordon. But if you make enough passes, diagonal passes against that 1-3-1 zone, you can get some easy shots. And the key is patience, as you said. And so far here in the first half, Mama's being very patient offensively. And there's one guy that I want to shut down, Rashawn Turner. He's got eight. And a terrific seal in the low post on the ball reversal. Kept the defender on his back at the open lane to the goal. Two minutes to play in the first half. Monmouth leads it by 15. High score in half for the Hawks with 40 already, and we've still got almost two minutes left to go. And the season high 85 against LIU just this past Saturday. Keep in mind the last time they played, blocking foul, count the basket for Geraldo. The last time these two teams played at the Rothman Center, a low-scoring game at 59-52. That's not going to happen tonight. We're, we're almost there, for goodness <laughs> sakes. 42, and John Geraldo just very quick here tonight. Close by the first defender and then slides himself over. Nice play as Turner tried to pick up the charge. If Geraldo goes straight in and doesn't slide to the side, he's got a charge. Instead, he has an opportunity to and does finish off the three-point play. Geraldo with eight points in the first half. 18-point lead. Mama stays matchup zone. Turner gives it up. Dasher tried to knock it across, and Flynn was doing it here in the first half. Great save on the baseline. Oh, a little wild. Uh, a little wild indeed, but Norris calms things down as he drills a three. And how many times do you see in mass confusion and chaos someone just spotting up a three and getting a three-point shot? More threes out of confusion and transition than sometimes offset plays. No doubt about it. Defensively, you're chasing the guy with the ball. Everybody doesn't know where the heck to go. Trying to cover everything, somebody's got to be open. Watch him out. 35 seconds to play in the half. 10 on the shot clock. Inside, Corey Albano. Just a little straight 2-3 zone and a mix up on matches there as Albano slides from the high post wide open into the low post. So Mammoth just putting on a clinic here in the first half, leading at 45-28. What you want to try and do is finish the half off with the stop here on the last possession. Shot clock is turned off. Five seconds remaining in the half. Dasher puts it on the floor with three seconds and backs it in. Dasher with a nice slashing move to the goal as he drew defenders and finished it off. But still a very good first half for the Hawks as they go to the locker room with a 15-point lead. Mammoth leads it, as you said, by 15, 45-30. Just a terrific job by the Mammoth Hawks. 17 points by Albano to lead the way. Rob Norris leading the way for FDU with 12. So Mammoth did pretty much everything they needed to do in that half, Rob. Well, they played very well on the offensive end. They rebounded, which is always a key against FDU. And then defensively, they matched up against pretty much everybody, although Norris got free for a couple of threes, three of them all totaled. But all in all, a good half for the Hawks. So that's the story in the first half points, and Turner came alive late, finishing with eight in that first half, Carrasco with five. And another important stat, Rob, uh, 
We talked about FEU's lack of guard, solid guard play all season, and Carrasco and Norris, the starting guards, both played the entire 20 minutes in that first half. And Tom Green did not go deep in his bench. Jimo King off the bench with 11 minutes. Green Thompson with five, the only subs as we take a look at the stats, and the one that jumps out to you, especially from a mama's standpoint against a team like FDU, is dominating them on the boards, 19 to eight. That's a stat right there that sums things up. Look at FDU shooting 52% from the field, find themselves down by 15, and the couch <laughs> potatoes are just really excited. I mean, even, even when they cheer, it's like a slow motion deal. Please tell me Sit down, have something to eat, relax. Try not to fall asleep seems to be the uh, motto being used by our couch potato folks. But a good first half for Mammoth, a not so good first half for FDU, and the Knights had a difficult time in terms of controlling the backboards, and that statistic, as you said, jumped out. John Geraldo in his final regular season home game here at the Boylan Gymnasium, along with fellow senior Pat Flynn and Jack Gordon. There's Flynn right there. As always, the first couple minutes of the second half in just about every game determines how things are going to go. But very important for the Hawks that came out on fire out of the locker room to start the game. Need to match that intensity here to start the second. And somehow they got it down low and a big move by Turner. He covered a lot of ground right there. And FDU draws first blood here in the second half. And you're right, Rob, I think the key to this one is intensity because FDU will make a run at you. Oh, they, they play hard, and even though they haven't played well, they're just not gonna roll over and die. And they come out man to man. And on the baseline, Albano was fouled, I believe, by Turner. And those guys have really started to bang inside. Started late in the second half, both of them pushing and shoving. Turner called on the grab. Well, FDU known for physical play. Mammoth in the past had a reputation of being soft and FDU used to like to take advantage of that. And a travel before the foul inside on Albano and that may be Tom Green's philosophy, come out and be a little more physical. Well, you see there, before the foul, they called the walk. Didn't look like much of a walk. Looked like he had his pivot foot on the ground and just tried to gather himself, but whistled for the travel. So the turnover gives it to FDU. Norris for three more. And that one in and out. Turner's over the back. That could be a big play. Turner quick and picking up two quick fouls here in the second. He now has three. That was a big three that Rob Norris makes. That goes down and cuts it to 10, and who knows? The three looked good when it left the hand of Norris. But in and out it went, so Mama has it on top, 45-32. Flynn, 14 feet away, he's got the shooting touch. You see him there, he's looking for his teammates, but no one's guarding him. Why not step up and knock it down? You haven't missed in two games, keep firing. Well, Pat Flynn, as we know, it's been a confidence factor more than anything as Carrasco nails it. Seven points for Pablo Carrasco. And Pat Flynn with some big contributions here tonight. He's got eight points. You now in the 2-3 zone. Clarksdale got it for three. Mom, it's a tough team to play straight zone against because they've got too many guys that can spot up at the three. Clarksdale being one of those. Clarksdale has hit a couple of threes tonight. Carrasco from long range. That is a shot that FDU did not need. Clarksdale feeling it now with that one off the mark. Touch pass. The floater by Albano won't go, and they are banging inside. Corey Albano is possessed inside tonight. And he keeps getting shots. He's got a knack of getting himself open around the basket. He's missed a couple layups here, but he continues to get himself open for good shots. Geraldo missed it. And tipped out of bounds by FDU. And the reason Albano's getting those shots, Rob, as we said before, is because he's so active without the ball. He keeps moving. He's got a knack of getting into open spots. Geraldo, another three. No doubt about that one. As soon as it left his hand, Geraldo knew he had the stroke. 53-34, Mammoth on top. 
Morgan to Morris. Carrasco bounced it one way, and Morgan went the other way. A tough play there, and Tom Green, and it's been the turnovers that have killed them all year, and when you're playing against a team that's struggling at 7 and 16, one thing you want to try and do is you've got to try and demoralize them. They've struggled, not won very many games, so you want to try and get after them, not allow them to keep hanging around. Alvaro Mejia checks into the game. Mejia, the cousin of John Geraldo. There he is. One of two FDU players from Maris, Pablo Carrasco being the other. High school teammates of Geraldo. Fifty-three, thirty-four. Ten on the shot clock for FDU. Inside they go with six. And a nice move across the lane by Jimmo King. Nice strong move by Chimo King. He was recruited early on in his senior season by some Big East and Big Ten schools and ended up going Redemption Christian for the year of prep, ended up here at FDU. Big recruit for them. And that one, nothing but net, except it didn't go through. It just ticked the net on the way by by Pat Flynn. And what can Wayne Zoke say? Flynn's played great, but that one may be a little bit too much for, for Pat Flynn out of his range. A little bit out of his range, but can't say much because he's played hard and done a good job for you. That's a three-pointer for Mejia. They got to get out and guard him. He can shoot the ball from deep. He was five for five from beyond the three-point range against the mound earlier this year, so he gives him a little bit of scoring threat from the guard spot. Mejia matched up against his cousin John Geraldo in the man-to-man. -man. One-on-one, Geraldo pulls up, goes glass. And Albano bounced it on the baseline. And Mammoth wants a 20-second timeout. Mammoth had come out after a little early spurt from FDU and matched their intensity. But Wayne Zoak sensing that the team's a little bit discombobulated on the offensive end. A little bit too much one-on-one -on -one play to go on. Takes the 20 seconds time out. Block it out, Sam. Block. We gotta block that. The boards are real big. We're gonna come back to the well one more time. Time in blue. Rashawn at the mid post. Rashawn at the mid post. Set the quality screen and roll back hard. Don't force it in now. We got 35 seconds to get a good one. Let's go. Play hard, right? Well, they want to go to Rashawn Turner, mid post. 15.48 remaining here in the second half. Mammoth 53 and FDU 39. They'll put Turner at the mid post to start off against the zone. We'll look to try and roll him down the low post. And Pat Flynn is all over Turner. Plenty of time on the shot clock, only at 18. Turner was open, they missed him. 10 on the shot clock, off the hands of Turner. Flynn dives for it, got his hand on it, but out of bounds, it goes back to FDU. Great defensive possession for Flynn. Did a great job in on the low post and then showing you the hustle as we look at him here, banging inside, FDU just trying to screen between Ching and Turner. Two seconds on the shot clock, corner jump, and a whistle and a foul against Gordon. And Rashawn Turner dunking the ball after the whistle. Wayne Zoke looking for the tech, and Turner dunked it and immediately looked at referee Jeff Plunkett and said, I didn't hear the whistle. Well, Wayne Zoke talking to John Fletcher there. But a bad foul by Mama Chimo King, not really a threat from outside. His range really like 5, 10 feet. Jack Gordon fouls him out near the three-point line. Bad foul for Mama. So King strokes the first. John Letcher said something to the effect of, you don't really want us to call that one, do you, Wayne? And Wayne just looked at him like, yeah, I'll take it. Take any of them. <laughs> nice release by King as he hits the pair, and all of a sudden it's 53-41. 12-point lead. 
Plenty of time, 15.04 remaining second half. Quick move, Barksdale pulls up on the runner. Got the roll. A lot of hands up around the rim that time. Little shooters roll as the ball hat. hung on the rim for a while before it decided to go down. That's a big two points for Barksdale. Turner spins. And a great presence of mind by Turner to find King. Chimo King all of a sudden making his presence felt in on the low post. 12 point lead for Mammoth. Flynn reverses to Geraldo. They're diving all over. Great effort right there by Rashawn Turner. Take a look here. The nice drive by Barksdale as Norris reached out, tried to grab him as he went by. And a lot of hands up there by the rim, but nobody got the ball. You got it. Somebody touched the rim, but nobody had the ball. And it's now time for that famous Sneaker Stadium promotion we're used to seeing here at Monmouth University. That's a story with 14, 19. And here we go. In the gray, it's John Bretock and Mike Kelly. On the right, we believe it's Kelly and Bretock on the left. And they have got a fight to get the pants on. This is the slowest moving group we've ever seen. Now he's putting them on the wrong way. He's got them on the wrong way. Now, it's a great thing, though. I'll tell you, we ran a set of games down at Lehigh, New Jersey's best against Pennsylvania's best in high school, and we stole this from them. <laughs> Guaranteed. It was a big hit. I'll tell you what, though. These guys got to work on their technique. <laughs> this isn't working here. <laughs> going to be held up for a little bit here. These guys are too neat putting things on. <laughs> this might be one of the worst performances we've seen, folks. The band's going to be tired playing that. They're saying go to this end. Oh, they're going to this end. These, okay. these two guys are so slow, they say go to this end instead of down the other oh, way. Oh, there's a, a, a moving screen. That'll be a foul. Number 30 shoots it up. Is it going to drop? It looks like Mike Kelly. <laughs> oh, whoa, ooh. And he just let the sneakers and everything go. He's he's back. The shorts are on the ground. Uh -oh, he doesn't that's care. A, that's got to be win. his qualification. He's getting his win. Are you kidding me? Danny Sullivan's just open. One ball goes in, so it doesn't go on for about another 10 minutes. And Tom Green in the FDU huddle is probably going crazy. We come up here. They have senior night to slow the start of the game down. And then finally, he's exhausted. Congratulations. Well, if the names I were, were, were given are correct, that's Mike Kelly. Although they did tell me Mike Kelly would be in green. I don't see any green there. It looks like Ooh. blue, but that's close enough. <laughs> so back to basketball action with 14-19 remaining. Mammoth on top, 55-43. 15 seconds remaining on the shot clock. Gordon squares up in the corner. The rainbow is good for three. That's a big basket. After you had cut it down to 12, momentum starting to shift their way. Big three. Jack Gordon with eight points and playing solidly and under control again tonight. Mejia has to give it up. Mejia down the lane, nice dish off to Turner. Nice pass and good penetration by Mejia. Known for his outside shooting, so he pump fakes, you rush at him, puts it to the floor and created a nice easy shot for Turner, who almost got fouled on that shot as well. Alvaro Mejia with a good job off the bench. Loose baller, diving for a great hustle, and Norris calls timeout. He said FDU would not die, and they just keep hustling and banging and chipping away. They're a young team that's just trying to get better and better. Smart play by Rob Norris here on the good hustle, good post defense from Turner. Wayne's Oak wants to travel on the turnover right there as Norris rolled over. I tell you what. Who allows you, Rob, to let your momentum carry you? 
And Corey Albano there got a good foul in. He's always, anytime there's guys on the floor and stuff, Corey Albano's gonna grab you, shove you, grab your shorts. He gets away with a lot of that stuff in there. Tom Green has certainly not thrown a towel in on this one. His kids are battling, trailing it right now, 58-45. A heads up play by Norris to take the timeout. It was a 20 second timeout. So FDU has burned their 20 here in the second half. And the Knights need a hoop right here. Jeff Franklin has checked in. I want him to come out and try to slow down Mejia just a bit. They're trying to run Mejia off that high screen. They went inside to Turner, and Albano fouled them. FDU showing you good patience, trailing by double figures all game. They have not rushed things, haven't rushed shots, been very patient trying to get that ball inside to turn. Second foul against Corey Albano. Thirteen points for Rashawn Turner. Tom Green's club battling back here. One more for Turner. Along with a great job against Turner down at FDU earlier in the season, held him to seven. Here's where you got to be careful against FDU and switching up defenses. Got to be aware you don't want to turn the ball over against them. Look for him to double on the first pass. 58-47, 11-point lead. It was up to 20. 13 minutes to play. Quincy Lee bounces to Geraldo. Tough pass all the way across to Ideatus. Mammoth now with Franklin and Geraldo in the backcourt. Inside Albano, beautiful feed right there. Great entry pass, great angle. Great entry pass and nice strong post up by Albano. Now, as you said, John Geraldo found him. Terrific patience that time by Mammoth. There's Turner. Inside they go. And that one inside against Quincy Lee. That's his first. So Quincy Lee, take another look at it here. And again, FDU now pounding it inside. This is vintage FDU right there. Good spacing, too, by FDU. They've got perimeter players out at the three-point line, making it hard to double down unless you do it from inside. Seven points for Jimo King. King, 6-7 out of Hillside, New Jersey. And he's been solid at the line. He's got eight points. And he's given him a lift here inside. He's been establishing good position done a good job giving him a second inside presence. Franklin out there running the point, allowing Geraldo to go to the two spot. Here's Geraldo. Franklin back out to Geraldo. Ten footer in the lane. Geraldo got it back. Great touch pass. Mejia slapped it away from Albano. Great play by Mejia. Anytime you're a guard, try and strip it before he gets the ball up. Pretty move by Turner down the lane with the left hand. He's got 16, and the lead is 9. And 60 Wayne, to 51. And Wayne Zoak needs a timeout, and he'll take one. Timeout has been called by Monmouth. That is their first. Valvaro Mejia has given FDU a big lift since he came into the game for Pablo Carrasco. FDU's been on a run, and for the first time in a long time, the lead's down to single digits. No question, Mejia has been the spark. Take a look here at some play for Mammoth. John Geraldo gets himself a good look at the basket, blows by Mejia. Little 10 footer, but comes up short. Nice pass there, and a good pass, maybe a little overpassing by Mammoth, but nice strip from Mejia down low. Can't guard the big guy up top, get it before he gets it up. And then Turner here with the pretty move and finish with the left. Mejia off the bench, as we said, has been the spark. And you mentioned earlier, Rob, that the first half, Carrasco and Norris, the starting guards, both played all 20 minutes of the half. Tom Green finally gave Mejia a chance here in the second half, but it has paid big dividends. Then he's responded to, you know, sometimes you're frustrated as a player. You didn't get in in the first half. You come in and try and do too much. 
Mejia hasn't done that. He's played under control, and he's been a spark. That's a very good point, because keep in mind, you're playing with athletes who are all used to playing all the time through high school and so forth. And, you know, a lot of guys will come in and sulk if they don't get time. Mejia certainly has a sulk. He's come in and has been impressive. What? So here we go. Nine-point lead for Mammoth. 11.40 to play here in the second half. See what they set up off the timeout. Bano may have gotten away with one there. Well, Bano went strong to the goal, took two bodies down with him, but a strong finish for Albano. Mejia may have started to go down a little bit before the contact, and if officials see that, they're not going to give it to you, even if he does run you over. And the show shows you exactly where Corey Albano is as far as terms of this team. Every time they go to a timeout and need a big basket, it seems that they start calling his number. 62, 51, seven on the shot clock. Morgan spins in the lane. Morgan, a terrific athlete out of Elizabeth High School. Nice move in the lane, pretty spin. 62, 53, Quincy Lee at the top. Ideas look to the rim, that threw the defender, and then Albano finished. Left you got caught in between. They really don't want to guard idea this out there, but as soon as he looked at the basket, the defender got conned into coming out to guard him and allowed him to make the entry pass. You're not going to guard him. Just stay there in no man's land. Let him take that shot. That's a shot that FDU wants Mammoth to take. Particularly if it's idea this. Nice move by Morgan, but it won't fall. Loose ball picked up by Geraldo. Pussy Lee kept it alive. 11 point lead. 10 minutes to play. Geraldo's been out there the entire game. Geraldo squares up for three. Bingo! Big time shot for John Geraldo deep in the corner. Another set play called from the bench and good execution on the floor by the Hawks. 14 points for Geraldo. He's got three triples. And that time, Mejia overpassing and got away with it. Take a look here. We talked about the play out of the timeout. And they went right to Albano, and something's got to be called there. Three guys end up on the floor, and they just head the other way. On the replay, Mejia did not start to go down until after the contact. So tough call for FDU on that one. Left to you again, struggling to get the ball inbounds. Nice job of scouting by the Hawks, getting out and really defending against the out-of-bounds plays. Couldn't get it in, so he just threw it off the Mammoth player. Remember, FDU already has one five-second violation. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Here's Norris. on the shot clock. Norris from deep. Got it. Well, two defenders ran to the wrong guy. Dasher's not a three-point threat. Two guys go run at him, and you leave the guy who can shoot from three open. Norris takes advantage. 15 points for Norris on, on four three-pointers. a short jumper. Rebound, Turner. And again, that's a shot that FDU will take. They want Mammoth. With the ball and idea in his hands. Franklin against Mejia. Mejia knocked the shot they're looking for. And may have gotten hit on the arm. Looked like he did, but even so, that's a four shot. Roscoe's been on the bench for a while. Not the shot you want as soon as you get back in the game. The lead is 11 for Monmouth. Geraldo, 15 footer, got it. John Geraldo playing a terrific basketball game. Great decisions with the ball, and he's been very quick with that first step tonight. Not forcing anything, creating his own shots. Norris floats down the lane. Well, somebody better step up and start guarding him. He's had a big game here. He's got 17. So they continue to trade baskets here. The lead is 11 for Mammoth. 7.45 to play. 
to you out of the straight man, little one, two, two zone. Geraldo fired up a long three and he was hammered. Oh. Rob Norris committing the foul to Geraldo. A little bit out of range actually for three, but he'll shoot three at the line. Bad foul by Rob Norris. As you said, a deep three, and once it leaves his hands, there's nothing you can do anyway. That shot as he challenges it, he crashes in on the follow through. Take a look here. He spins his body around, and you'll see Geraldo go to the floor right out in front of the officials. They're not going to miss that. Geraldo misses the first. As we both mentioned earlier on, Geraldo coming into the game with 1,653 points. We said he needs 96 to overtake Al Blackwell and move into first place on the list. He's got 16 tonight. So a lot of Mammoth's team success will directly affect the record books. The more games that the Hawks play down the stretch, the better chance John Geraldo, who's been playing real well and putting up better numbers here in NEC play, averaging almost 17 a game in the NEC. So the team success will affect whether or not he ends up in first or second place on the all-time scoring list. Wayne Williams, number 33, left the game, replaced by Gmo King. Geraldo hits two out of three to make it 71-58. on top. Rashawn Turner down low. They're trying to get it to him. And that's going to be a foul against Albano in the low post. That's his third. Did you leave him in there? Well, I would leave him in there, definitely. I mean, this is not a situation where you want FDU to get on a little bit of a run. And that was a tough pass, too. Chimo King was out at the three-point line. It's a long way to make that pass. So Albano will stay out with three fouls inside the King, and he backs it in with the left hand. Take that Turner. Excuse me there, Bob. Nice move. Great catch. And again, his left hand, he's finished in around the basket a couple times with the left. That was Rashawn Turner backing it in. He's got 18. 71-60, Mammoth leads it. After you in a little quarter court zone, just a straight zone defense. Shot clock shows 15. Quincy Lee airborne. Three on two. Norris for three. He's got it. Rob Norris continues his super play. He's got 20. And again, it's another three in transition as everybody's watching the basketball. Norris found himself wide open. And Mammoth calls timeout number two as they lead it 71 to 63. Wayne's Oaks Club was up by 20. Take a look here on the replay. Looked like Quincy Lee had some contact, but look at Mama's standing. Corey Albano and Quincy Lee standing watching. FDU comes running back. Rob Norris, despite the challenge from Geraldo, drains the three. Good concentration by Norris, and Geraldo ran right at him, got up in his face, but he nailed it anyway. Rob, I'm just going to uh, mention the note you just wrote here. Uh, Point to Mama, Rob Kenny just wrote me a little uh, note. He said, they better be careful. And I wrote that to Brian about uh, five minutes ago with about 11.50 left to go. And he just had that feeling that FDU was playing a little bit harder, a little bit more aggressive. Shots weren't falling, but you just had the feeling that momentum was starting to switch. <laughs> FDU Knights have not folded up the 10 by any means. Tom Green in his 13th season. John Geraldo in his final regular season home game. Ryder 53, Robert Morris 37. Here we go, 6.30 left. 71-63, Mammoth leads it. Big possession for the Hawks and with FDU in the zone defense, it's harder to call one specific person's number. You just got to get good ball moves. Well, they call Geraldo's number, and he hits the two from the corner. Beautiful release by Geraldo. So again, Mama taking advantage of the timeout. 73-63. Bob 
Pablo Carrasco is back in there, number 22 with the basketball. 10 seconds on the shot clock for the Knights. They want to go to Turner. Five seconds, they skip it. Dasher kicks it out, one second. Carrasco fires and hits the three at the buzzer. I was just about to say that FDU was getting a little bit too concerned with getting it into Turner. Mammoth collapsing, collapsing, and at the buzzer, that's a huge three. Cuts it to seven. Pablo Carrasco nailed it, 73-66. Mammoth on top. The zone defense has done the trick for FDU. It's kind of slowed the tempo and gotten Mammoth out of any type of rhythm. Albano kept it alive, and he's fouled. Chimo King on the reach in. He can't believe it. Well, it was an easy call. He definitely reached across. Foul call number 35, Chimo King. That's his third personal foul. Fourth team foul on the night. Fourth team foul here in the second half charged against FDU. Shoot one and one on the seventh of the half. Here's Gordon with five minutes to play. Barksdale, corner jump, that's good for three. Nice screen in two on the low post by Corey Albano. Now Mammoth will pick up in a little full court pressure. And the lead back to 10 at 76-66. Anytime a Hawk hits a three, they get a t-shirt thrown into the crowd. That brings them to their feet. Dasher in the corner, back to Carrasco with eight on the shot clock. Gordon runs down the air ball, fired up there by King. Not the shot FDU was looking for. Four minutes on the clock, they've got to come out and start playing some man-to-man -man defense. Can't sit back in the zone anymore. Ten-point lead for Mahmoud. Inside to Albano. It was partially blocked by King. Norris has been tough from three-point land. Nice rebound. Back to Norris. Three more for Norris. And again, it's in a breakdown situation. Great D by Ideatus in transition. The big guy, instead of dropping down to the basket, came out and guarded Norris. Didn't allow him to get the three off in transition, but they get it off the second shot. Rob Norris with 23 points. Six three-point shots. Geraldo looking for three of his own. And that's the fourth foul on Albano. Well, he's got to call that foul. For goodness sake, Corey Albano's got him by the leg as he ends up on the ground. So a scrambled situation, and Albano called for the foul. Three minutes, 27 seconds to go. Decision time for Wayne Zoke. And FDU, I think, does a favor to Monmouth, calls a timeout right here. We take a look here, the scramble situation. Good hustle by Carrasco, and then... Look at Albano with his hand on his leg, just begging for the official to blow the whistle. Three minutes, 27 seconds remaining. Mama's 76, and Fairleigh Dickinson, 69. This Rob, a typical Northeast Conference game this year. Uh, we talked about the parity. Most of the teams uh, able to battle at any team. The Hawks have had a great season, but they've had to uh, work for almost every win. And tonight, FDU down 20 has not given up by any means. Uh, Mama came out with great intensity. Let's listen in to Tom Green. Most teams would have packed it in, especially considering they were coming off a bad loss at home to Wagner. 81-57, so once the Hawks got on top by a bunch, kind of figured that FDU might roll down and die, but hasn't been the case. They've shown a lot of heart and determination here in the second half. Monmouth comes out, full court pressure, 2-2-1 against FDU. Albano stays out there with four personal fouls. 76-69. 
66-69, FDU has the ball, they trail this one. Crowd's starting to step up a little bit and give the Hawks some help. 12 seconds on the shot clock, inside the Turner. Great defense right there. They scream for the walk, they don't get the call, and Norris misses the three. And the foul against Turner. The body's all over the place underneath. Turner aggressively to the offensive board. Tom Green waving his arms there. I tell you what, Norris's shot was right on the front of the rim. Looked like it was halfway down. Take a look here. Great defense inside. Good pump fake, couldn't get the ball off. No foul there, good D by the Hawks. And, woo, right on, but couldn't get it to fall. So Turner picked up the foul, that's his fourth foul. Mammoth has the ball, 2.40 to play. They lead it by seven. Geraldo keeping his head up, looking for the open man. Mammoth trying to run some time off the clock. Shot clock at seven. I think it is in the lane, short jump. Well, and if they're not gonna guard you, you gotta step up some time and make a shot. Ididas has good skills, it's just a matter of confidence. Showed some confidence there, knocking down the shot. This has turned into a terrific college basketball game, and Mama comes up with a steal off of pressure. And we haven't seen much full court pressure by the Hawks all year. Good call from the bench here, his team struggling a little bit offensively. Wayne Zoke sneaks an extra possession with the turnover off the press. A minute 52 to play. Geraldo takes it on his own shoulders and draws the foul. John Geraldo on any night's a very quick player, but tonight seems to be just a half step quicker than even usual, and no one's been able to guard him one-on-one, -on -one, man to man. Nice quick first step and then the strong move to the goal, picking up the foul. Jim O'King called on the foul, so he now has four. Geraldo with 20 in the books already, now has 21. And the lead is back up to 10 with a minute 50 to play. <laughs> 80 to 69, John Geraldo with 22 points. Full court pressure again. Norris gets it over to Carrasco. King looking inside. Rebound Gordon and Jack Gordon with another solid performance tonight. Smart play by Ideas, they back it out. 15 on the shot clock, a minute five left in the game. FDU looking to trap the ball. They come up with the steal. Was just about to give up the foul as well. Norris drills a three. Wow, Rob Norris has been on fire. As we said, two-time NEC Newcomer of the Week. And I'll tell you what, he's making a play for a third, third Newcomer of the Week award. He's got 26. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven three-point shots for Norris. 26 points in all. Geraldo just fumbled that one away. And just as FDU was about to intentionally give up the foul to try and put the Hawks to the foul line, no need on the turnover, becomes three. 57 seconds remaining in this one. Mammoth on top, 80 to 72. So it's an eight-point lead. And the chicken dance being played here at the Boylan Gymnasium. Music provided by Music Time. Is that a chicken or a hawk there? Well, that's a, it's a hawk dance tonight. <laughs> hey, they're moving over there. All right. Uh, just one guy. The other two people are still just enjoying a nice, comfortable seat. It was 45-30 at the half. Mammoth had the lead. They opened the lead up to 20 a couple of times, and FDU, with about 12 minutes remaining, started to make their move, and they have fought their way back. They got it down to seven, but right now, they trail it 80 to 72. And right now, all Mammoth has to do is take care of the ball, be strong with the ball, 
finish things off at the foul line. The key's getting it in and taking care of the basketball. And Barksdale had it knocked away, then he bounced it out of bounds, and there's the turnover. FDU still has a life. You know that FDU's going to come on up and foul you, so just be strong with the basketball. Take the foul, take the contact, get to the line, and finish the playoff. Norris. Here's Turner in the lane. Norris tried to call timeout while in the air, but came down on the line before the timeout call. Geraldo had it knocked away, picked it up, and fouled by Dasher. Well, for a second there, it looked like it might have been another Hawk turnover, but John Geraldo, with his quickness and speed in the open floor, runs it down. His second personal foul, 17 foul on the night. So Geraldo will shoot one and one. He will shoot one and one. The Hawks number 40, Pat Flynn. Pat Flynn checks in. Albano. Gets Albano out of there. Albano has four fouls. Flynn out there now to play some defense. Well, that's the senior role. <laughs> John Geraldo just said, oh, my goodness. Shooting a little bit of a line drive. He's been short on a lot of shots this year from the line. He'll get a little more legs into this one. That's better. 24 points for Geraldo, 82-72. FDU throws it away, and it looks like the Hawks will survive this one. Second time that Monmouth is forced to turn over with their little 2-2-1 full court press. Remember, FDU not very good with the basketball, has a tendency to turn it over. Nice coach's decision to go to the little full court press. Geraldo all the way into the backcourt, fouled immediately oh, by Carrasco. His first personal foul, eighth team foul. So the night. senior captain, John Geraldo, John Geraldo the line back to the, to the line. He will shoot one One and one, and this is the time of the game where point guards and two guards have to earn their money. Got to be able to convert at the line. Back to the line. John Geraldo does there. And Mama's going to escape with the win. Pick up the paper, see a double-digit win, but it was a lot harder than that. Indeed it was. And with the win here tonight, Monmouth will guarantee nothing less than third-place finish in the NEC. And they're hoping to run the table and see if they can't get some help from Maris to see if they can't win the regular season crown. Rashawn Turner converted. He's got 20 uh, points in the no game. And Ideas whistled on the foul. 16 fouls on the ball. From Turner and Norris, sophomores and freshmen respectively have combined for 46 of their 74 points here tonight. <laughs> 84, 75, 29 seconds to play. Gordon gives it up quickly. And Carrasco whistled for the foul. Almost a good steal. Good piece of the arm. No, he knew it. Oh, number 22, Pablo Carrasco. Geraldo marching to the line here down this stretch. Adding to his point total already at 26 tonight. But that's what you want. Put the ball in your point guard's hand down the stretch. And let him march to the foul line. Finish the game off. So Tom Green certainly uh, had his team battling. They were down 20. and Coach Green didn't throw in the towel. And they have made a game out of this one. And Wayne Zoak goes to his bench, I'm sorry, Bob, and gets his seniors out. Jackie Gordon gets a nice hand. Pat Flynn with a nice hand off the start tonight. And if Geraldo makes this, he'll come out to a big ovation. Nice uh, touch by Wayne Zoak. Geraldo leaves, replaced by Franklin. He replaces John Geraldo. John Geraldo, his final regular season home game. What a career. And what a performance tonight as well. 28 points for Geraldo. Franklin with that rebound. Mustafa Barksdale. They count it down. 
66 to 75. Mammoth defeats FBU. Terrific game. A very good game. We saw Mammoth play one of their best first halves of the season, led by that guy, John Geraldo. But FBU hung in there, such a lot of heart and character. And a big spark by his friend right there, Alvaro Mejia, his cousin. Gave FBU a spark. And Rob Norris and Turner had big games as well. As you said, just a good all-around college basketball game. And Mejia, certainly a key off the bench when FBU came back with Jack Gordon. And company did the job. Gordon with a solid night off the bench. 